I am a jet propulsion engineering intern here at Larson Motorsports, and I'm also an aerospace engineering student at Florida Tech. And one day, I want to be an astronaut. I'll be your guide to anything and everything rockets to race cars. Blazing Trails is so excited to be partnering with NASA Hunch to teach students about all the STEM opportunities here on the Space Coast and all around the country. Rockets to Race Cars will also focus on teaching students about how the space industry has transformed so much of the technology that we see today. It will compare NASA technology and racing technology so that you can visualize real world applications today. Join us on the ride and see what STEM can do for you. Have you ever thought about if an airplane can fly in space? Well that would be really, really cool, but sadly they cannot. Airplanes use air breathing jet engines to fly, whereas rockets use non-air breathing engines to fly. There's no air in space, right? So rocket engines tend to work a little bit differently. Fun fact, I'm actually the jet propulsion engineering intern here at Larson Motorsports, so I really enjoy studying these guys every day. Jet engines and rockets are actually founded on the same principles. Newton's third law states that each interaction between two objects produces a pair of equal forces. They produce thrust through an internal pressure difference and then eject exhaust gases in an equal and opposite direction. So the main difference between these two engines is that a jet engine actually uses the air around it to burn its fuel, whereas a rocket actually has to carry its own oxygen to burn the fuel. The second major difference is the fact that these jet engines actually have two openings. They have an air intake and an exhaust nozzle. Rockets only have one opening, which is the exhaust nozzle. Our jet dragsters use a J85 General Electric jet engine. These air breathing engines have three sections. They have the compressor, a combustion chamber, and an exhaust outlet. The space shuttle's main engine was the Aerojet Rocketdyne RS-25 engine, like we have right here. It was a liquid fuel cryogenic rocket engine. It was designed and manufactured by Rocketdyne. The RS-25 burns cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellant. Each of these engines produces up to 418,000 pounds of thrust. And there were three of these engines on the space shuttle. So if you think about it and you do the math, that's over a million pounds of thrust. These J85 General Electric jet engines that we actually use can produce up to 5,000 pounds when using an afterburner. So since our jet dragsters actually use afterburners, they can hit speeds up to 250 miles per hour in just five seconds. Our jet dragsters actually run the J85 jet engines to their max performance. We are able to do this without wearing out the engine because of the time that they actually have to run at these high performances. The runs of the races are about five seconds and the engine life is actually around 90 seconds because we run them at these high performances. We are able to run them at these high performances because if you take five and multiply it by 18, that gives you 90. So that means we have about 18 runs before we actually have to inspect these engines. So a lot like jet engines, these RS-25 engines are actually removed after each flight and then they're inspected and then they're refurbished for the next missions. It is very important to conduct regular engine checks. That way we ensure that our astronauts and racers are always safe and ensure that you have a successful mission. Both of these engines are extremely powerful in terms of what they are designed for. Even though air breathing and non-air breathing engines are very similar in the fact that they're based off the same principles, they're very different because of the tasks that they were designed for. It's time for me to blast off.